the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Yours is the kingdom. life encouragement oh god lord minister in that situation god lord touch sister cindy this morning god lord bring healing god into her body lord we need a miracle god lord in brother sterling's life god lord touch his jaw lord you can take that pain away lord in the name of jesus god we bring debbie to you today god reach down and work a miracle in that situation god for mandy melissa and skylar lord you're able to he bring healing god into their bodies god healing into their family lord god lord touch emma today lord move in a mighty way oh god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voice this morning. Lift your voice this morning. Lift your voice. Praise him. Lift him up. Give him everything you got. Bring that offering. Bring your sacrifice. Lay it before him. Lord, we give to you a living sacrifice. We come to praise you. We come to worship you. We come to bring the sacrifice of thanksgiving from the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. I feel the healer in this house today. I feel the presence and the power of God in here today. God is a miracle working God. He's able to do anything that is asked of Him. He's able to do more than what we can think. He is still on the throne. He's still in control of everything. Hallelujah. And all he's got to do is speak the word and our problem's taken care of. Why don't we praise him? Why don't we just praise him? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your help today. Thank you for the miracle that's for me today. Come on, you need to claim it. This is your day, your day, your day, the day of your miracle, the day your answers have come, the day, today, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, amen. Every Sunday morning, we pray. that only I can step and I roll back the clouds of darkness and I breathe upon you my children joy 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 and I say unto you receive it and claim it with everything within your being let your faith reach out unto me and receive the joy the joy of the Lord that is upon you and for you I sin this day thank you Jesus I Lord in my God Come on, somebody, you need to step out in faith and claim this. Come on, your spirit needs to laugh again. Your soul needs to rejoice again. In the name of Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody received it today. Somebody receive it today. Receive it today. Receive it into your very depth of your being. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. Come on, this is a Holy Ghost. This is a Holy Ghost. Children of God, you need to receive this. You need to receive this. Hallelujah. You need to let your heart open up.
listen to me. I know good and well there are more than 70 people in this house right now. You need laughter in your spirit. You need laughter in your spirit. Why sit back? When God stepped in here and said, hey, wait a minute, I want to interrupt everything. And let me talk to my people. Why sit back today? When God has spoke to you, don't go home in your depression. Don't go home when you're worrying that's been tearing you up in your mind. Go home today saying, I'm getting a hold. God, talk to me personally. Hallelujah. If you've ever stepped out from where you are and just done something. If you've ever stepped out in your life and said, I'm going to do something in faith. And I'm going to step out here on a platform I don't see or understand. My God, do you need to do it today? Leave that demon behind. Leave that depression behind. Leave that fear and torment and worry behind. I feel the joy of the Lord falling. Cause of me, I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. I've been 
something I feel in the Holy Ghost you know you read in the scripture in the Word of God where it talks about a root of bitterness the root of bitterness that springs up and then it talks about it affects many and it talks in scripture in this context that many people fall from the grace of God with this this bitterness we get bitter over many things we get bitter because jack in the box put the wrong stuff on our burger bitterness has a way of getting into your very being and once it dies it opens the door for all these little old Spirits work their way in and causes people to fall from the grace of God. Our true deliverance is joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Sometimes we think, you know, they just try to pump us up, get us emotional. And all the football people pump you up and get you emotional. We're not here to pump nobody up and get you emotional. We're to put enough faith in you. Throw enough seed of the Word of God out there. Put water on it. God said, now I'm going to do increase. You need to overcome. You need to over, let God increase you. Let him give you an overcoming power and overcoming strength. That all those demonic spirits and things and oppressions that work their way in through this bitterness get destroyed. And we start walking and shouting and jumping and having ourselves a Holy Ghost victory time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, some of us, we, all we can do is lock our eyes on that mountain that's in front of us. All we can see is that problem and all we can see is Goliath. And that's all we can see. But God has helped me. I've lifted my eyes to look over his head. Look over the mountain. Look unto the Lord from which gives me my strength. Look out there in the vision the eyes of the Lord give me. I see a great revival. I see a great harvest. I see miracles and signs and wonders. And I see people of every nation come into the house of the Lord. If you do not like what God's prepared for you here, there are people out there that would love to have. They just don't know where it is. But I'm praying God's going to help us cross their path. And they're going to love what's here. They're going to love the presence of God. They're going to love to sing in the choir. They're going to love to worship. They're going to want to be in it. Come on, I see it. I see it. I see it. God has let me see what's over that mountain on the other side. Come on. Come on, I'm sorry, but I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm just telling you what God's saying to the man that's on the wall, to the watchman on the wall. He told me, don't worry, don't worry. There are people, they are so spoiled, they don't care about what they got. But there's a multitude out here. They want it. They want it. They love it. They desire it. Hallelujah. And so I'm praying different now. Hallelujah, God. 
I want you to lead us and help us. We want to find the praying people. If you can find praying people, I don't care what they're praying to. They're people of sincerity that are wanting God. Lead us to the praying people. I don't care if they're praying to Buddha. I don't care if they're praying to a tree. I don't care. I want the people that are hungry. They are hungry. Lead us. Connect us. Help them to somehow find us. Hallelujah. If anybody can be led, it's people that are praying. I don't care what they're praying to. They're deceived. Some of them, they don't have truth. They don't know the truth. My God, we got it. We got it to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Robocovi and the Rabaha. In the atmosphere, I'll just hold it with the bottom. In the atmosphere of what we have in this place. Meanwhile, what, 20 minutes later, we're going to pray for Switzerland. I want revival of the nations. Amen. I want revival of the nations. I want to be a church of the nations. There's a longing and a hunger and a thirst in me. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Let's pray for Switzerland. God, we bind together. I bind together with this church body and with this church family. And we speak. We speak healing over Switzerland. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, we speak deliverance unto the people. We speak the peace of God unto that land. We speak the mighty divine guidance and power unto those missionaries, unto those ministers of that nation, unto the people of that land, unto those leaders of that nation. We speak in the name of Jesus right now. You said that you can take two or three that will agree and anything's possible. And nothing's impossible. And Lord, we stand today and we speak and we pray and we bind together with the people of that land. 
And in the name of Jesus, we command the clouds of darkness to be removed. We command the armies that are unclean and they want to bring destruction unto those people. We command them to be broken. In the name of Jesus. And that there be a great revival in that land of Switzerland. And a blessing and joy. And Lord God, we pray that if there be anybody here around us, that are around us somehow, some way, help us, God, to cross paths with them, make contact with them. But Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your church, the kingdom of God all over this world. And we want to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, Lord, we praise you and we thank you. God bless everyone. Saturday, we got rained out and we had to cancel our outreach on Saturday. But we spent some money on our cards and we don't want it to go to waste. So we're asking everyone to pick up at least 10 to 20 cards and invite someone to church with you for Easter, okay? It's not hard. If you have a hard time speaking to people, go in a bathroom, a restroom, in a public place and lay one down. When you're eating at a restaurant, put one on the counter. There's a lot of ways you can do it if you're bashful, okay? But I'm asking you to reach out in boldness and hand some out in your neighborhood. So there, you can pick them up when you come to give your offering today. They'll be here in the front, and there is also some in the offering, I mean in the foyer. So please help us pass those out. You can have a, have a seat before we go forward. It's not every day that you have someone in your church that turns 90. So we're going to uh, just kind of recognize. Sister Margie, can you come up here a moment? I won't make you walk on the stage. She's recently had to move away from her home and live with her daughter. And so she's now a part of our church. I don't know if she really likes that or not, but. <laughs> but I think it's something how God works. When I was a little girl, it was always great when I would hear my parents say, we're going to go see the Carico family. Because back then, man, I just thought the Carico were the richest people on earth. And I just thought they were something. She drove this big Lincoln that had that hump on the back. And that was all my, always my dream. When I grow up to be a, 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 an adult, I want a Lincoln. Of course, you know, you always think people are rich when, you know, they're pro you know, you just never know. But when you see people with things, you think, oh, I want to be like that. But they were really good friends with my parents. And I had no idea that one day that her daughter would be in our church and that you would have to move away from the country. But I just want to say it's not very often that we get to have a 90-year-old in church and so God has blessed you to live 90 years and I want to say happy birthday God bless you I just thank the Lord that I received the Holy Ghost when I was about 18 years old and I've lived for the Lord ever since and I married a man that was really filled with the Holy Ghost and I just thank the Lord for that 67 years of marriage that I had. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't really know. I believe when my parents moved to Houston, they were older than my parents, and they went to a little church in Jacinta City, and that's how their paths crossed, I believe. And, um, and I just remember as a little girl going to their house, and they had a, a house with a drive, a drive in front of their house, and I've never forgot that place. Anyway, happy birthday. Um, I think there was one more thing I was supposed to bring. Nope, that's not it. So I'm out of the way. Brother Solis. Praise the Lord, church. Glory to God. Isn't God good? Oh, it's a beautiful anointing in this place, a beautiful anointing. If you weren't able to see or tune in or be here on Wednesday, just want to remind everybody there's still miracles here in the building. There was two miracles that were announced here on Wednesday night, and we give God glory for that. 
if whatever you need is in this house because the king of glory is here in this place if you believe that this morning let's get on our feet let's lift up our hands and let's just say thank you because he he alone is god he alone is sovereign and he alone is in control of every single situation amen we like to make welcome every single one of our guests. Thank you for coming out and worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with us this morning. As you come and you bring your tithes and offering, please don't forget to go around expressing and showing the love of Christ to one another. Lord, we love you this morning and we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for everything you're doing and we thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do. We believe, Lord God, that you're sovereign in every situation and we believe, oh Lord, that you'll use these tithes and offering for your glory and you'll use us, oh Lord, to reach, oh God, our community. Get, lead us, Lord God. Guide us. Take us, oh Lord. We will follow. Call, Lord God. Let us be sensitive and season every single conversation that we have with every single person, Lord God, with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name be it so. Amen.
got somebody very special I want to welcome back sister Claire I want everybody to embarrass her everybody else can be seated except sister Claire we've missed sister Claire and if y'all can look y'all see there's baby here it's a can I tell the secret of the gender? It's okay, okay. It's, it's, it's a girl. It's a girl. So that means there's some boys around here. The day's coming. They're going to be like, check her out. <laughs> We're so glad, just to Claire, we've missed you. We've missed you. We're glad to have you back here in the house of the Lord today. And that sweet baby, we just pray the strength and power of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am so thankful for the presence of the Lord that we feel. I don't ever want to take it for granted. I am so thankful and we are so blessed. To be able to to move and function in the mighty power of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Spirit in operation in us and through us in our midst. I'm glad to have our evangelist, Brother Smith. Brother Smith, man, you've been preaching and we've been rejoicing. Thank you for being with us. Come on, Brother Smith. Amen. Excited about what the Lord is doing. And we're thankful for Brother Smith and these evangelists that are moving and that are functioning under the power of the Holy Ghost and that are led by the Spirit of God. Brother Smith, we love you, man. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lamentations 3 and 22 says that the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Thankful for another day that God has given. Another start, another opportunity that he has extended to us. Psalm 30 and 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I feel that in the house of the Lord today, fresh starts, new seasons that God is bringing us to. Whenever his presence comes down, it can do what nothing else can. Psalm 16 and 11 said, in his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And we are just so excited to be here this morning. Love and appreciate my family. And I think uh, we all need to pray for the Sunday school teachers. They got Silo back with the Sunday school. So my little one-year-old will put the Sunday school teachers to the test. So we love all of you so very much. Grateful to be part of what God has been doing, what he still is even right now. I love, give honor to your pastor and his family. They have just treated us with such kindness and consideration. If you would stand with me, if you have your Bibles, we're going to open and we're going to read from the book of St. Luke chapter 19 and we're going to begin at verse number 9 and we're going to read two verses of scripture, Luke chapter 19 verses 9 and 10. 
St. Luke chapter 19, verses 9 and 10. The Bible tells us this. It says, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. If we want to know the reason why Jesus came, he tells us in verse number 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And with the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach to us on this subject, the Savior search for souls. The Savior's search for souls. Would you mind lifting your hands? Would you pray with me again? And let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Would you do that? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are thankful for every life, every individual that is in this sovereign sanctuary. And God, we are praying now that you would send down your anointing and it would move upon our hearts. It would speak to our souls here today. God, we give you praise and thanks in advance for what you are going to do in our midst. And we pray in the name that's above every other name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. When the words of Elizabeth Taylor to her seventh husband. I won't hold you long this morning. So you may be seated. Thank you for standing with me. It was in Luke, the 12th chapter, that we find Jesus with his disciples. And he begins to teach them a parable. And in this parable, he tells us that there was a certain rich man. And this man brought in quite a harvest. So much so that he was put in a predicament. He, his barns could not hold the harvest that he had gotten. And so he decides within himself that his best option is to tear down his barns and to build bigger, to build grander, and to build greater. And after all was said and done, after he had completed and finished his project, he said to himself, he said, So take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But in verse number 20 of this 12th chapter, it says that God spoke unto him and said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. The Bible becomes so clear. It is so straightforward and emphatic that our souls matter most to God more than anything in this life, more than any accomplishment, more than anything we could ever do. What matters more than anything is our soul cars will rust out houses will get old uh, hearts will stop beating uh, lungs will quit working uh, blood will stop flowing but all oh, our souls will live forever regardless uh, of what transpires in society despite what happens in elections uh, our souls will continue to live all the days it was Jesus that said in Matthew 16 and 26, he said, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Over and over again, we find the Lord speaking. In Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, and the fourth verse, God begins to declare, all souls are mine. Uh, regardless of how old we are, where we come from, what our background or lineage is, God declares our souls belong to him. And I find it ever so interesting that this creator of the ends of the earth, the one that 
hung the planets in orbit, the one that named every star, the one that makes the trees to grow and the flowers to bloom, the one that makes the sun to shine and the moon to glow. When he began to search this earth, he did not search for the birds that chirped. When the Savior began to search the earth, he did not search for the ocean waves that roared. But instead, in Ezekiel 34 and 11, he said, I, even I, will both search my sheep and I will seek them out. He will go to great lengths. Don't ever discount how far God will go for just one soul. Uh, he, he told the disciples, uh, he said, even if there are 99 that are safe, even if there are 99 that are at home, uh, even if there are 99 that are perfectly fine, if there is one that is lost, uh, if there is one that is wayward, uh, if there is one that has drifted away, I will seek them out. I will find where they are. I will find where they're at. I will find what they are doing. Oh, this search was so great. It was so great that he was willing to take every step possible. Not long ago, I was reading an article in Los Angeles, and they were having a street sweeping day. Of course, metropolitan cities that are larger have to uh, have particular streets that are clear uh, when heavy traffic comes. And I know here in Houston, you don't have any heavy traffic, so you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But there are cities that actually have to have traffic and you'll sit and not be able to move. Well, Los Angeles uh, is no exception to the rule. And it got so bad. It got so intense that the city of Los Angeles actually had to take out signs and billboards, had to put advertisements out to make sure that all the residents knew which streets to avoid. Because when these large street, street sweepers are coming through, you'll be stuck and unable to get out. So the Los Angeles Police Department was in charge of patrolling the streets to make sure everything was clear. And so one particular officer was making his rounds and came upon the street. And when he arrived, he was amazed at what he saw there with all the advertisements, with all the warnings that had been given. There was still a car parked on a street that should have been cleared. And so he simply got out of his vehicle and made his way towards this car, saw the man sitting in the driver's seat, but then not even acknowledge that he was there, got out his ticket book, wrote out a ticket and slapped it on the windshield and said, I'm busy and I don't have time to talk to you, but you need to move this car and move it now got back in the, in the patrol car and went down the other streets. And nearly 15 minutes later, he came back to the location that he was before. And guess who was still parked in the exact same place and in the exact same location? He couldn't believe it. This man had already gotten a ticket, and yet he still had not moved. About this time, the tow truck had come. And the officer now was irate, got out of his car, met with the tow truck driver and said, you need to go ahead and uh, get yourself ready and remove this vehicle. I've given this man a warning and now he's missed his chance. Came towards that car and the man was still sitting in the driver's seat. Now the officer stood beside the car. The man made no move. And the officer began to knock on the window Still no response and began to knock a little louder and said, you're going to have one more chance and I'm going to open the door and have to remove you from this vehicle. Still no response. And finally, he opened the door and lo and behold, the man that was in the driver's seat was dead. What he didn't know was about 30 minutes earlier, that man was having a heart attack and needed somebody to help him. 
But the officer was more worried about giving him a citation than giving him a savior. He was more worried about telling him what he was doing wrong rather than trying to help him out and get him where he needed to be. Hey, I got a feeling that when we flip through the pages of our Bible, we find something very similar happening. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus was with his disciples, and they come upon a man that's rejecting the teaching of the Lord. They come upon a man that's not following after the ministry of Jesus Christ. And the disciples got so mad, they turned to the Lord and said, Jesus, you know what you need to do to this man you need to open up the windows of heaven send down fire and burn that joker up and you know how Jesus responded in Luke 9 and 56 he said the son of man has not come to destroy men's lives but to save them Jesus said, you want to know the reason why I came? I came not to condemn the world. I came to save the world. I did not come to push people down. I've come to pull them up. Hey, can I let somebody know this morning, there's a God in heaven with his hands outstretched saying if they would just make a move, if they would just respond, if they would just react, I'm willing to reach for them. Oh, he was willing to go on a search, a search that caused him to leave the hallelujahs of heaven. It was a search that caused him to leave the perfect paradise. It was a search that caused him to leave the celestial choirs. It was a search that caused him to leave the eternal ecstasy of glory. When he came, he was announced by the angels. He was born in Bethlehem. He was seen by the shepherds. He was worshipped by the wise men. He was hated by Herod. He was persecuted by the politicians. He was rejected by the religious. He was slandered by the scribes. He was misunderstood by the masses. He was mocked by the mobs. He was forsaken by his friends. He was cuffed like a criminal. He was crucified crucified on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, but that did not disillusion him. That did not deter him. That did not distract him from the search that he was on. Uh, his search was so great uh, that when they hung him up uh, on the hill of Golgotha, the search continued. When they spit in his face, the search continued. When they shamed him in public, the search continued. When they nailed him to the cross, the search continued. When they gave him vinegar to drink, the search continued. When he hung his head suspended between heaven and earth and died, make no mistake, the search continued still. He searched and searched and searched. He was willing to do whatever was needed. He was willing to do whatever was being asked because what mattered more was not the stars that shone bright in the sky. It was not the beautiful splendor and the grandeur and the majesty of the heavenlies, but what moves God, what touches his heart, what moves the mountains of glory is so Souls, souls in the balance. You may not even realize it and think that we are in control of our own lives, but you don't know what he is already preparing. It was in this 19th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke that Jesus was preaching and teaching and crowds had gathered around multitudes had followed they wanted to see this with their own eyes they wanted to hear him with their own ears we've got to go and be where Jesus is 
And in this 19th chapter, it says there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus desired to see Jesus. But when he came to this crowd, it was already at capacity. There were already so many people that had come. There were already those that had put themselves around him. And Zacchaeus, even though he wasn't very tall, he decided he would take a drastic measure. Uh, he decided, I'm going to climb a tree. When you decide you're going to climb trees, I would say you mean business. Uh, and he got on this tree now and started climbing. And as he got to the top of the tree, he could see above the crowd and he saw Jesus. And while he is sitting in this tree, while he is looking in the direction of the Lord, Jesus stops and said, I see you, Zacchaeus. You know what was happening? Zacchaeus thought he was trying to get to Jesus, but Jesus said, I've been searching for you. You know what he tells him next? You thought you were going to come and see me? I've already decided I'm coming to your house. I was just waiting on you. Here Zacchaeus is standing up in this tree. He's up here and everybody else has turned their attention and they looked at Jesus and they said, Jesus, that man is a sinner. That man has done wrong. That man is a violator of the law. And Jesus said, this day is salvation come to this house. I know what he's done wrong. I know the mistakes that he's made. But the reason why I came, I came for those that are hurting. I came for those that are suffering. I, I came to those that are sick. I, I come to those that are disgruntled and discouraged. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, what I love, what I love about the Lord is, is he's not a respecter of persons. He will go after anybody. He will seek after anybody. He will search after anybody. And I feel the burden of your pastor this morning uh, that I wonder what it's going to be like when we get on the other side of glory and we worship with the saints from all over the world. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen uh, when we worship with the saints from every nationality uh, and every culture uh, and every ethnic background. Uh, I wonder how many praises are going to be ringing uh, saying I'm so thankful that you saw me in my state uh, and you didn't give up on me. I'm so thankful that you picked me up when I was down. You encouraged me when I was discouraged. You didn't abandon me or forsake me. Oh, I wish we could have a glimpse of what heaven is going to sound like when the people from all over the world tell Jesus, thank you. I got a feeling if I was Chinese this morning, I, I would say, oh dear. If I was Danish, I'd say, Mangatat. If I was Italian, I'd say, Grazia. If I was Hebrew, I'd say, Totoraba. If I was Greek, I would say, Eucharisto. If I was Japanese, I'd say, Domo Origato. If I was Portuguese, I'd say, Obligato. If I was Spanish, I'd say, Muchos Gracias. If I was French, I'd say, Messi Boku. If I was German, I'd say, Danke Schern. If I was Russian, I'd say Spasiba. If I was Kenyan, I'd say Ashanta. If I was Ghanaian, I'd say Madasi Mapi. If I was Zulu, I would say India Boka. If I was Sutu, I would say Kali Boha. If I was deaf, I would go because he searched for me he searched for you he searched for your soul he searched in drug houses he searched in bars he searched the clubs he found me where I was he saw me out he saw me out he saw me out his search his search is not for just one class or one sect or one group or one people his search is for anybody with a soul He searches for those that have been raised in church. 
He searches for those that have never darkened the door of a church. He searches for those that have a lineage of Bible teaching. And he searches for those that have never read one page in the Bible. His search is greater and grander and bigger. And he is willing to do whatever it takes for one solitary soul. I wonder if you could just raise your hands to the Lord for a moment. Oh, I feel his presence here today. Maybe it's just the piano player gets ready to come. I'm going to be just a few more minutes. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel God speaking to somebody in this room. You may be seated just for a moment. I'm closing with this thought. It was back in 1878. There was a man by the name of William Gladstone. Mr. Gladstone was a member of parliament. And he had to address the House of Commons. And Mr. Gladstone had been brought under question. There was a lot of mystery that had surrounded him. And questions that demanded to be answered. The reason why he was under so much scrutiny is that it was said that Mr. Gladstone knew the cause of death of Princess Alice. Princess Alice had died very suddenly. No one really knew what had transpired. So the day finally came that Mr. Gladstone had to stand behind the podium Look into the eyes of some of the most powerful men in the world. When asked what had taken place, he simply responded with just one phrase. He said, Princess Alice died because of love. He already knew the answer was not going to be sufficient. And so he began to elaborate. He said, Princess Alice had a daughter, not very old, just toddler age. And her daughter began to get sick. At first, it was just seemingly a sore throat, having a hard time breathing properly. But her daughter began to gradually get worse, so bad that her daughter would actually begin to be unable to breathe would literally be suffocating herself. And it was then that the princess realized there's something more here. There's a bigger problem at play. And so she took her daughter to the hospitals and the doctors that were available for only the ultra-rich. Some even reserved exclusively for royalty. And they promised her they would do everything within their power to make the correct and proper diagnosis. And so together, this team of doctors worked diligently. And finally, the main physician met with the princess in a room and said, Princess, I need to tell you what is going on with your daughter. Your daughter has contracted a disease called diphtheria. Diphtheria is a swelling of the glands, and in short, it cuts off the oxygen supply. Back in the late 1800s, it took the lives of many people, especially children. And he said, I, I really hate to give you this news, but your daughter has the disease. She said, well, what needs to be done? What kind of medicine can you offer? What kind of prescriptions can you give to have some kind of remedy and to have it fast? And that's when the doctor, he paused for a moment and so, well, I'm sorry, princess. The problem is there is nothing we can give. There's nothing we can offer. Your daughter is going to die. So the princess, hearing this news, just began to weep, began to cry. Finally, the doctor said, but princess, there's something else I have to tell you. Diphtheria is highly contagious. And if you go around your daughter and if you, if you begin to breathe the same breath as her, if, if you begin to hug your little girl, and especially if you kiss her, 
a high probability you'll contract the disease and you'll die as well. He said, this is what we've been telling people to do. We can offer you to go back to the palace and find a room where your daughter can stay. Put her in that room. Make sure she has food and water, place to use the restroom. And let your daughter die in that room by herself. So the princess did what they told her to do. She took her daughter home as the music begins to play softly. And she put her daughter in this room in the palace. And then Mr. Gladstone said she took an old rocking chair and she set it right beside the door. And so business was always being asked. Her presence was always being requested, but every time she gave the same answer, I can't leave my daughter. And she stayed that way for days. Her daughter just got worse and worse. Till finally, Mr. Gladstone said it was one particular day. The princess was in the same spot in that old rocking chair. and Her daughter began to cry and began to choke got so bad that her daughter was literally screaming. She said, Mommy, Mommy, save me, help me. I'm going to tell you, I was reading this story and just tears streaming down my face. And finally, the princess had sat in that chair and she listened to the screams of her child. And she said, I can't do it. And she got the key. The security tried to stop her. Those that lived in the palace tried to warn her, Princess, you cannot go in there. It's too late. You, you, you can't put yourself at risk. And her daughter screaming all the while. Finally, she says, Mommy, do you even love me? The princess said, I can't do it. I'm going in. They said, but you, you don't know what's going to happen. She said, listen. My daughter will not die wondering if she has a mother that even loves her. It's not going to happen. And she went in. She grabbed her little girl, just toddler age, not very old. Put her in her arms and sat on that old rocking chair. Said, baby, everything's going to be all right. Don't cry. Mommy's right here. Her daughter now shaking, convulsing. She said, Mommy, will you just kiss me? Please tell me I'm going to be better. Without batting an eye, without thinking twice, she held her little girl in her arms and kissed her, cuddled and hugged her. Said, everything is going to be just fine. Mr. Gladstone said it was in that rocking chair her daughter died. He said, and I know I've been brought under question and I know there's a lot of mystery that surrounds me in the death of Princess Alice, but I was the one that walked in. I was the one that was close enough to her. She let me in. But when I walked into that place, when I came into the palace, it was in that same rocking chair. The princess had died of the same disease. He said, that's why I told you she died because of love. She was willing to lay down her life just so her child would know they were loved. And I'm going to tell you, when I read that story, I thought, oh my, this is the gospel message. This is what we believe. This is the foundation of our faith. Because all of us are born into a world with a disease called sin. Some of them don't know it. Some don't acknowledge it, but there's a void in your heart that nothing can fill. Some try to fill it with drugs. Some try alcohol. Others try money. Some try education. Some try entertainment. But at the end of the day, there's a void that you cannot fill with nothing in this life. And yet, God loved us so much that Romans 5 and 9 says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
He looked and peered over the portals of heaven, tried to find somebody, but he could not find any. So he said, my own arm brought salvation. I said, I'm willing to go myself. I'm willing to leave all of the heaven so that souls would know they are loved. And I wonder today, as every head is bowed, every eye is closed, with nobody looking around, I don't know what more you want him to do. There's an old song that said, he laid the foundation. He opened up the way. What more can he do? His search led him to the cross. His search led him to his own death. His search led him to the greatest sacrifice so that your soul can be saved. Sir, ma'am, don't let it be in vain. Young person, don't let it be in vain. He died so that we may live. He went down and conquered hell so you wouldn't have to. Jesus already paid the price. And if you walk out of this place without the Holy Ghost, if you walk out of this sanctuary without repenting of your sins, if you walk out of here not being baptized in His name, it is not the Savior's fault because His search has led you right here. He's just waiting on you to respond. I wonder as every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I'm praying right now there would be a hunger and there would be a thirst. Lord, we are praying even now that there would be a gratefulness inside of the hearts of your people that would say, I'm so thankful, Jesus, that you died for my sins. I'm so thankful that you gave your life so that I would not be lost. I'm thankful for your search found me and I'm willing Jesus to do whatever it takes God we plead the blood even now against every principality and power I pray now there would be somebody in this room that would make a wise decision I'm praying right now there would be a brave soul in this place that would say the search is over he found me Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.